Welcome to a Lion Locomotive in 5 inch gauge part 7, changing the water gauge for a much better one. Previously I fitted this water gauge because it was better than the first one that was fitted when I bought the engine. But after a few months of frequently admiring this engine because it lives in the lounge, I really started to dislike this water gauge and I think I need to get out more. There were two things I didn't like about it, one being the knurled nuts that hold the glass in place. I really hated those from the beginning. But the main reason was this water gauge must have come off a specific engine. I bought it on eBay. And the very nicely made lever and linkage was never in the right place owing to the distance of the centres between the bushes on this boiler and the bushes on the boiler that the water gauge was designed to fit on. And for that reason I'm going to change it. A few months ago I saw some of my favourite type of water gauges come up on eBay. I would normally buy them from Blackgates Engineering but they seem to be permanently out of stock of this particular type that I like. Anyway, the good news was I bought two of them for a very good price. They weren't cheap but I'm not bothered about that, I like good quality things in my life. And they were for sale as a pair, so I bid on them and won both of them. And in this episode, after I remove this water gauge, I'll be fitting one of the ones that I got on eBay the second time round. Removing this water gauge is considerably more difficult than it was when I first fitted it. The Loctite 542 is really doing its thing. Needless to say, you need to be very careful and make sure that you use the correct Loctite product for the application. You must never use Loctite 603 for boiler fittings because to destroy the bond of 603 you have to heat the part to quite a high temperature and it certainly would not be a good idea on the back head of a boiler. Anyway I didn't do that, this is definitely Loctite 542 and here you can see the residue that's left behind when I removed the gauge fitting. This water gauge is going to go in a plastic bag and it will live in my box of water gauges. And just in case you don't believe me, here is my box of water gauges. To be more accurate, this should say small water gauges. I have a larger box for larger water gauges. This is the type of water gauge I'm going to fit to the Lion. These really are very high quality water gauges. The main body is made from bronze. You can see the difference between the brass part for the blowdown valve. The first thing I'm going to do using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap is clean out the bushes to get rid of the old Loctite 542. I haven't removed any metal during this operation, just the Loctite 542 residue. And a word of warning, before you do this make sure you definitely have the right type of tap in your tap wrench. Here is the end result, a nice clean thread in both of the bushes. Now it's much easier to screw the new water gauge in and out. Unfortunately the blowdown valve lever is on the wrong side and when I open the fire hole door it gets in the way. Oh no, it's the end of civilization as I know it. But not really. The brass part, which is the blowdown valve, is threaded into the main bronze part. All I had to do was loosen the blowdown valve by using my small barco spanner on the flat part and once I'd broken the seal it was very easy to remove the part. All I had to do was apply some new Loctite 542 to the thread and screw it in position making sure that the lever is at the same side as the other lever. And once the fitting is lined up and screwed into the bush everything will be fine. To allow the correct alignment of the water gauge fittings I need to look in this box. Yes you guessed it, it's my box of quarter by 40 bits and pieces and in there somewhere are quite a few copper shim washers. Just like the one shown here. But unfortunately this one was a bit too thin. The second shim washer that I tried was even thinner. And you can see what happens if the shim washer is too thin. I can turn the water gauge fitting past where I need it to be. Third time lucky and I got it right with this one. I applied some Loctite 542 and screwed it permanently into place in the bush. Loctite 542 is really good for water gauge fittings because even when it's gone off and it's actually doing its job and sealing the joint between the threads, you can still make fine adjustments and the thread remains sealed. The last time I fitted a water gauge, or on the time before that and the time before that, a few viewers wrote in to tell me that I should use a piece of bar the same diameter as the glass for when I'm aligning the fittings. Well I disagree with this because there's no pressure on this glass at all. I do not move the fitting when the glass is in the hole. 
I could have suppose waste some time and wander round the workshop looking for the right diameter piece of metal bar. But no, for the last 40 years I've done it this way, so I think I'll continue. And in no time at all, I get a good alignment between the top fitting and the bottom fitting. Next, I need to shorten the piece of glass because this piece is far too long. And these days, I use a very useful tool that I bought via eBay. The first thing I need to do is mark the length of the glass, and I'm doing this with my felt tip pen marker. Then I use this very clever device. All I need to do is just scratch the outside of the glass. If I apply too much pressure, the part of the tool that's scratching the glass will actually break the glass. You will end up with two pieces of glass tube, but it won't be as neat as this. Watch. A perfect clean break. If you don't have one of these special tools, it's a good idea to buy one. But you can use one of the edges of a triangular needle file to achieve the same result. When you fit the glass into the fittings, you have to do it in sequence. Push the glass through the top fitting, fit the o-ring and then the nut. And for the bottom fitting, you fit the nut first, followed by the o-ring. A quick word of warning, it's a good idea to rub the edges of the glass on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to remove the sharp edge. And if you don't do this, two things are likely to happen. You may manage to cut the o-ring with the sharp edge of the glass. And the second thing, you may cut yourself. Another word of warning, do not over tighten these nuts. They only need to be just tight enough to seal the glass against the fitting. Don't forget that these fittings do actually move around slightly as the boiler expands as it gets hot and then contracts as it cools, so it's very important not to have the nuts holding the glass too firmly in position. And that is about it. The new water gauge is fitted, here it is, and to my eye it looks splendid and far better than the other one. Just to remind you, this is what the other one looked like. OK, but I definitely prefer the new one that I've fitted. In this clip, I've connected some compressed air to the boiler using this piece of silicone rubber pipe. And the water gauge is leaking really badly where the nuts hold the glass in place. I can clearly hear the sound of the air leak and feel it blowing on my hand. The next bit is very important. Wearing a pair of safety glasses, I very carefully tighten the nuts, which in turn apply more pressure on the O-rings and seal the leak. In the next episode I'm going to steam test this locomotive because even though I've had it for several months I've never run it on steam. The oiling of locomotives where all the motion and all the working parts are inside the frames is quite difficult. And that's especially true on this engine. There's no way I can get an oil can in at all unless I tip it on its nose like this. Most miniature locomotive clubs have a section of track which can be used to drop the fire out of the firebox. And if I was at such a track, I would probably oil the locomotive from underneath, but it's really much easier to do it like this. And for the purposes of the video, it's very good for two reasons. One is I can clearly show you how it works, and the other reason is I can make it go really fast and upset the viewer who said, why do you always thrash your steam engines? They don't need to go that fast. This viewer has obviously never seen a real steam locomotive or steam engine running. They didn't always run slowly especially that locomotive called Mallard. I rebuild model steam engines fairly frequently. If you watch my videos, I do make one every day. So I often run them fast to make sure nothing drops off. And if something is going to drop off, it's better doing it here at my workshop than when the customer gets it back. It doesn't apply with this engine as it belongs to me. The next episode in this series will feature the first live steam test of this engine since I bought it. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.